going on everyone so today we're looking at elite code number one question called two sum and I believe this is the most popular question on elite code uh, it's also I think the most frequently asked question as well let's take a look here yeah so you can see in the last six months it's just asked everywhere and uh, very very common question very popular question so definitely one to be very, very familiar with. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at a few different approaches to solving this. We'll look at a brute force approach. Uh, we'll look at um, another uh, approach that could be space optimized, not for this particular problem, but if it was a something similar. And we'll look at uh, a, an optimal solution. So let's take a look at this prompt. We're given an array of integers, nums, and an integer target and we want to return the indices of the two numbers that add up to that target. Uh, we can assume that each input point will exactly have one solution and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. Okay, so here we have 2, 7, 11, and 15. Target is 9. So we're going to return the 2 and the 7 because they uh, add up to 9, but we're going to return the indices, so it's going to be 0 and 1. Here we have two, three, four, and target is six, so we're gonna return the indices for two and the indice for four, which is one and two. And then here we have three and three, so we do have duplicates, but the target is six, and so we, we're not gonna uh, return zero and zero, we're gonna return zero and one. Okay, because here in the prompt, uh, we may not use the same element twice. Okay, so let's take a look at a uh, couple different ways we can go about doing this, okay? So we have 2, 7, 11, and 15. So we're going to have the numbers 2, whoops. Okay, so we're going to have the numbers 2, 7, 11, and 15. Okay, and our target here is going to be 9. So a brute force way to do this is to just do two for loops and check every number against every other number and then if they match the target we return we return the indices. So for example we're going to take 2 at the ith and we'll check j does that equal uh, 9? It does so we would return we would return the indices here uh, but let's say let's say the target was um, 17, right? So we check 2 with 7, it does not equal, j increments, 2 with 11, it does not equal, j increments, and um, 2 and 15 do uh, equal 17, we, we return 0 and 3. So that's a brute force way to do it. If we use that method, what is our time and space complexity? Okay. So we're not creating any new space, but our time complexity would be O of n squared. Okay, and our space complexity, because we're not creating any new space, we're just gonna return the result value, the space complexity would be O of one. So we could do this in constant space, but our trade-off is, is we're gonna have quadratic time. Okay, so now let's look at another way we could approach this. This input is sorted, okay? But if it was not sorted, let's say we had, let's say we had, uh, let's say we remove these here, okay? Two, seven, 11, and 15. And let's say we had these in different order. Okay, so we have two, seven, 11, and 15. Let's say we did 11, two, 7 and 15, right? Now what we could do is we could do a sort operation. We could sort this input and that would be uh, n log n. So we could sort it at a cost of n log n. And then what we could do, so if this is sorted, we're gonna get back to 2, 7, 11, and 15. To perform that operation, it's going to cost us at, uh, an n log n uh, operation. Now, once we have this sorted, then we can use a two-pointer approach. 
And how will that work? Let's say we have an i variable here at the start and a j variable here at the end. And now we can check, do these sums, does the sum of these two numbers, is it greater than, less than, or equal to our target? If it's equal, then we just, we know the two numbers that we need uh, to, to find the target. It's just we have to return the indices. So we'll get to that in one second. But let's just first figure out if these two numbers equal the target. If they are greater than, then what do we want to do? We want to decrement j. Okay, so if two and 15 plus 2 is 17, that is greater than the target, we decrement from the greater side. Here we have 2 and 11. It is greater than the target. We're going to decrement. And then here we have 2 and 7. The only problem is, is that when we sorted this, our indices are all now different. Here we have 0, 1, 2, and 3 representing those respective numbers. But we need to return the numbers respective to, respective to the input array. So if the question was not asking for indices, we could get away with just sorting it and returning the actual values. But because this question is asking for the indices, we would not only have to sort the uh, array, but we'd have to make a copy of it. We'd have to have, we would have to have that input array in its original state. We couldn't just sort it in place and then lose those, uh, those places in the, in the indexes. Now, what we could do at this point is we could take 2 and 7 and then run it again uh, over the original input array, find the indices, and then return the indices. Okay, so what would our time and space complexity here be? So we're going to do um, our worst case on time is going to be O of uh, n log n. Because of our sort operation, and our space complexity is also going to be O of n, because we we're going to have to copy our sorted array. We can't just use the original array and do it in constant space. Okay, so that that's another way we could do this. Now, what's the third way? The third way we could do this, the most optimal way, is we can use a hash. Okay, so let's figure. Let's take a look at how how to approach it using a hash. We're going to have our input two, seven, eleven, and fifteen. We're going to have a target of nine. And now what we want to do is we have the indices here. Let's go ahead and put the indices here: zero, one, two, and three. We want to create a hash. And we want to set this hash to the values being the keys and the indices being the values. Okay? The values being the keys and the indices being the values. So we're going to create a hash and 2, which is the value, is going to map to the indice, which is 0. 7, which is the value of the array, is going to map to the indice, which is 1. 11, which is the value, is going to map to the indice, which is 2. And 15, which is the value, is going to map to the indice, which is 3. All right, now what do we want to do? We want to now iterate over the array, and we want to figure out what is a potential value. Okay, and then we're going to compare it to the hash. We're going to see if that number is in the hash. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, here we're going to have the value of 2, and we're going we're gonna to subtract the target from our current value. So let's say we're at the ith, ith variable here, uh, and we'll call this array nums. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a potential key. Okay, so we'll call this potential key. And what this is going to equal to is it's going to be our target, which is 9, minus our current value. Okay. And so we subtract the target from 2, which is going to equal, 
which is going to equal 7, which is in our hash. Okay, you can see it's right here in our hash right over here, and then we are mapping it to the index. So what we want to check now is if our hash has a, the potential key, okay, and the hash at potential key is not at the current index because remember we cannot we cannot look at the same numbers so that's another thing that we can't do so we have to also check if our hash at potential key is not our ith index okay and if it passes that, then all we have to do is return a duple with our ith index and our hash at potential key, the value at that uh, hash, hash key. Okay. So let's just kind of go over this slowly one more time just so it's clear. We're going to come here at the ith index and we're going to go ahead and subtract our total or target from our current value, which is 2. Okay, nums at i is going to equal 2 right here. This target 9 minus 2 is going to equal 7 and that's going to be our potential key. What we did beforehand is we went and put all the values and mapped them to the keys. Okay, so now we're checking, does this potential key exist in the hash? If that seven exists in the hash, we know that we have reached our target. Okay, and now we just have to make sure that this potential key is not checking itself. It's not the, the we're not doing, uh, it's not seven and seven, it's not checking itself. And that's all we're doing here is making sure that that potential key does not equal i, where we're at, the ith index, the current index. And if that is true, then we're just returning the ith index, which is zero, and the, the value of the hash at the potential key, which is one. Okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the code. Okay, so first what we want to do is we want to create a hash. Okay, and then we want to go ahead and set the hash and map it to the indices. So we'll just do one for loop here. Okay. And now we can go ahead and get our value. So we can say let val equal nums at index i. And now we're going to set the value to the index. Okay, the hash key is going to be the value and we're going to set that to the index. So just like we did right here, that's all we're doing. We're just creating a hash. And then the value of each one of those nums is going to be set to its respective key. Okay, now we're going to do another pass through this. And now what are we doing? We are going to get the potential key and check if it is in the hash and that that potential key is not at the current ith uh, element. So let's go ahead and create let potential equals target minus nums at i. Okay. And if hash at potential key and hash at potential key does not equal i then just go ahead and return the duple. Return i and hash at potential key. Okay, 
run that. And we're good. Okay, so now what is the time and space complexity using this method? Well, we're making one pass through the array to create the hash, and then we're making another pass through the array to find the potential key and check to see if that is in the, uh, in the hash. Okay, so our time complexity here is going to be O of n. Okay, because we're only making two passes through the array. We could even optimize it just to make one pass, but it's not going to change the, the, the big O. So now, what about our space complexity? Well, we have to create that hash that is relative to the size of the input. Okay, so it's a linear relation. So our space complexity here is going to be O of n. Okay. So we can get an optimized solution here of O of n time and O of n space. If we want constant space, then we have to trade off on time. And you know that first strategy that we looked at using two for loops, we could do this with O of, uh, um, o of n squared time and then constant space. Uh, the middle solution using n log n sorting it, that would actually be worse on space and still be linear on time because we'd have to make a copy of the array. So this would be the most optimal solution for this particular problem. We could get O of n time and O of n space. Okay, so that is lead code number one, the classic problem to sum. Highly suggest to be very familiar with all the variations and all the variations on how to solve this problem because as you can see, it, sh it shows up all the time. So it's a good one to know. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys on the next one.